Hey, what is up everybody? This is Caleb and I'm here with Carolyn and we have a special episode. We're going to be talking about blockchain. So um, I will let you introduce yourself and explain what you do in the blockchain space. Yeah. Hi guys. I'm Carolyn. I work for IBM. Uh, I'm on a team that's building the IBM blockchain platform, which is a place that you can go to build blockchain solutions. Right on. So um, this might be a dumb question, but can you explain what exactly is a blockchain and you know, how do you how do you blockchain? How do, how do you blockchain? Do so people are really excited about, about blockchain. Um, so maybe let's talk about why people are so excited. Um, so think about any way that businesses or people transact today. So if you want to send money to your friend overseas, you have to rely on a bank to do that for you. And you have to trust the bank to, to do it the right way. Right. Um, or maybe if you're Venmoing something, you've got to rely on Venmo and the bank. Um, maybe you have a business that's in shipping and you have you know, multiple levels of intermediaries to get your good from one place to another. Um, so that creates a lot of friction and inefficiency um, and that's the problem that blockchain solves. That's why people are excited about blockchain, but what is it actually? Blockchain is the underlying technology that made Bitcoin possible in 2008. So uh, what's Bitcoin? So Bitcoin, uh, it first came around in 2008 when a mysterious person or organization named Satoshi Nakamoto released a white paper describing a system through which you could transact money directly with another person, peer to peer, without any financial intermediaries. So this was the first practical application of blockchain technology. Okay, so like cryptocurrency. That's yeah. right, cryptocurrency. So Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency and Correct. cryptocurrency uses a blockchain. That's right. Blockchain is the tech underlying technology that makes cryptocurrency possible. Right on. So the Satoshi Nakamoto person, who is this? Nobody really knows. <laughs> there are many okay. hypotheses, like but Elon Musk. Uh, that's been a theory, but I doubt that that's the case. <laughs> so what exactly is a blockchain? I mean, you said it, it powers a lot of these things, mm -hmm. but what's a block and what's a chain? So blockchain at its core is really a, a structure of data. It's based on a concept that um, probably dates from the middle of the 20th century of just a linked list of data. Uh, so blockchain is essentially a group of transactions that are they're grouped together into blocks and those blocks are then linked together cryptographically to form a chain. So hence the blockchain. A blockchain is essentially a linked list of these blocks, right? Essentially, yeah. And so you can think of it also, a lot of people describe blockchain as a distributed ledger. That's what it is. So a ledger is a recording of transactions and it's a key tool for, for business and for uh, accounting. Um, so a distributed ledger is a ledger that is shared or owned by all the participants in a network um, and everybody essentially has a copy of that ledger and they can all rest assured, thanks to the blockchain, that what they're seeing and the transactions that they have are correct and are what everybody else is seeing. So that's what, uh, so that's why blockchain fosters trust in transactions and within networks and amongst groups of people. Interesting. So no one really owns the blockchain. That's correct. It's one of the key promises of blockchain is decentralization. You might have heard that word thrown around in terms of blockchain. Okay. So. It's not, it's not centered at like a bank. That's right. Yes. I mean, a bank is an example, but yes. it could be anything. Yes. Uh, I don't know. I feel like I'm just like, uh. <laughs> okay. How exactly is something added to this blockchain? Right. So the blockchain is a distributed ledger. So every participant in the network has a copy of that ledger. And basically, if a transaction wants to be added to the blockchain, the participants in that network have to agree or come to consensus that that transaction has in fact taken place. Um, and so that can be achieved in a number of different ways depending on the kind of blockchain that it is. Okay. But it's known as a consensus mechanism or a consensus protocol. And it's uh, basically a way that ensures that everybody agrees that something has happened and when the transaction is approved, it is then added to the blockchain. Can the blockchain be changed? So one of the characteristics of a blockchain is that it is immutable, meaning it cannot be changed. 
Um, however, if you wanted to reverse a transaction, so say I sent you some money and I wanted to take that money back on the blockchain, you, why we wanted to reverse a transaction, we would basically have to add a new transaction okay. to the blockchain. So the idea is that every transaction that has ever happened on the blockchain is visible. So it keeps like a, an entire history. Exactly. Of it's the all the transactions. It's the history of every transaction. And you can't remove any transactions. No, you can't. That's right. What are the most common uses of blockchain technology? Cryptocurrency was the first and most widely known, um, and probably the most widely used application of blockchain technology. But people quickly realized that the underlying technology under cryptocurrency could be used for so many different things. Obviously, cryptocurrencies allow people to transact money with each other but that can be that can be extended beyond just peer-to-peer -peer transactions um, you can imagine businesses transacting across borders much easier with blockchain technology supply chain is a huge area where blockchain technology is hugely hugely relevant and could reduce so much friction um, in the number of transactions that has to occur in a supply chain uh, identity um, so being able to verify that you are who you say you are could be made much more secure on a blockchain. Personal data. Imagine that you could own all of your personal data and only give it out to corporations for a fee. And that way you would maintain control over your privacy. So and you, like, sell your data. Right, exactly. So, um, you know, currently we don't have that much control over how our data is used. I mean, yes, sometimes we, we you know, take care to read through the terms and service, you know, the, ter the service agreements and things on websites, but really our data is being used all the time, um, every day. So imagine a world where you could own that um, and be able to distribute it to only the people that you say can. Is this uh, being applied in healthcare? Because every time I go to a new doctor, I have to repeat the same thing. That's exactly yeah. That's a that's a huge area where it could be helpful. So you could you could have a you know blockchain secured uh, record of your entire medical history, and you could bring it with you everywhere you go, and and that way you would not have to rely on the intermediaries being insurance companies, all the doctors you've ever had, um, and you would be the the owner, the sole owner of your medical history that would be that would be huge so to that point IBM has been working with different organizations such as a company called humanity.co to basically give people property rights over their personal data starting with healthcare data so they could potentially be reimbursed for corporate use of their data or they could donate it to charities or or medical research. or research facilities yeah there there are so many other cool use cases that you could think of for example luxury goods luxury goods is another area where blockchain technology could be hugely helpful um, IBM is working with a company called Everledger which is doing things such as tracking diamonds with blockchain technology and uh, ensuring that people know that their diamonds are not coming from uh, conflict areas or then that they're meeting UN regulations. So that's pretty exciting. Is there just one blockchain that everything goes on this blockchain or are there multiple blockchains? There are multiple blockchains and actually blockchain uh, it does not even encompass the entire, the word blockchain does not even encompass the entire space of what is called distributed ledger technologies. Oh, really? okay. So there are actually other ways of achieving this distributed consensus idea. So blockchain is just an example of a distributed ledger. It's a spe thing. exactly. It's a specific technological way to achieve that, but there are other slightly different okay. um, technologies. Okay. So if I have an idea that I think would qualify for like this ledger technology or a blockchain, mm -hmm. how, how do I get one? Or like. <laughs> Yeah. What, what qualifies a blockchain? <laughs> right. So, uh, you know, obviously I would tell you to go check out the IBM blockchain platform to start building out your idea. There's a, that's an IBM? That is, so that is IBM's blockchain as a service offering. So you can go on there and you can build a blockchain network, blockchain solution, um, and you can start building it today. There are a number of blockchain as a service platforms out there that allow you to build things on the blockchain um, and build what is called a decentralized application or a DAP. Um, so that is kind of the app of the future is, is the All decentralized right. so application. So if I want to make a DAP, you guys can help me do that. 
we can help you do that. What do you see as some of the potential uses for blockchain in the next one to five years? So I think in the next one to five years, a lot of businesses are really going to get out of the experimentation phase and like the excitement phase yeah. and go into the practical application of this technology. I think that we're, we're already really seeing that in the financial industry and we're already starting to see that in areas like supply chain and identity and um, even things like voting, for example. So cryptocurrency is one of the uses of this blockchain technology. Would you be up to doing another video just talking about everything cryptocurrency? Absolutely, All yeah. Right. Well, let's, uh, let's do another video. Please guys, be sure to subscribe. And uh, if you guys have any questions for me or Carolyn, just leave them in the comments below. And before you go, uh, is there any way that our viewers can connect with you? Yeah, absolutely. You can find me on Twitter at Carolyn Rogers. Uh, that's probably the best way. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thanks.